Good evening. The George Cuso party is next month. And, uh, gosh, 300 members, Hiram Award, all the activities. And uh, last night we had, what, over 50 people check into our net. So it's great to see uh, Ham Radio thriving in our community. I see some people that I've heard on the net come here the first time I think I've eyeballed them, K1SEA, Dana, who we talk on 10 meters sometimes, so great to see you. Um, we have a guest here, and I'd like to have uh, Chaz, Chaz Cone, W4GKF, come up. Chaz is a longtime Georgia CUSO party administrator. He had done the webpage for many years and overall on the committee that runs the uh, Georgia CUSO party. You may recognize Chaz, those of you um, who get the uh, announcements on the reflector of the 1010 net on Sundays at 1730 UTC on 1930. That's my bad math. Daylight Savings Sunday. I'm either late or early. It's one or the other, or asleep. Um, and Chaz, for many years now, has owned the low power plaque for single sideband in the George Cuso party and runs up a really good score. And we're fortunate he's a club member and we get his score contributed to our results. So, uh, Chaz, I present to you your. We also have the Narful Challenge. And you'll learn tonight uh, for the Georgia Cuso party, you submit your scores to the official Georgia Cuso uh, entity or committee or whatever you'd call it. But internally in the club, we have our own fun challenge. So, everybody can. Excel and maybe get a certificate in their certain category, which Chuck will address later. But Chaz is for again first place single operator low power phone George Cusa Party 2017. We trust you'll score high and again score high. He really doesn't want to give up the microphone. It's been my experience over the years. I have a quiz for you: 633,349. What does that mean? <laughs> it was the top score for the leading club for Georgia Cuso Party from Georgia last year, and once more won by Narvel. Akia <laughs> Sta, one more gavel. When you get to 50, it turns cold. <laughs> and because I screwed up, there's also a plaque. All right. I know you'll put this in your trophy case. I see it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Let me take the cover off that bad boy. Anyway, I'd like to encourage everybody to participate uh, and use NARFL as your, as your club of record. I don't care if you make 10 points or 10,000 points or 500,000 points. It all adds up. Uh, I'm guessing that one day NARFL will simply step aside and let somebody else win, but this ain't the year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Stand next to Hunter. And in reality, our goal really is to have fun in the contest, and the byproduct is sometimes we score well enough to win a gavel. So, um, and tonight we have a real treat because we're going to talk about the Georgia Cuso party, how to, and rovering, and you'll learn about that in the Georgia Cuso party <coughs> context, but also the principles and Facts you'll learn here tonight can be used for any contest and for any mobile rovering operation in a contest. So um, whether you're being a participant in George Cuso party or not, which we assume you all will, uh, you'll pick up a lot. Um, we are blessed with um, four prestigious presenters tonight. And uh, I, I was doing some math, and if you took into consideration our first speaker, Chuck, um, was first licensed 60 years ago, and you add up the experiences of the other three guys, we have 182 years at your disposal here tonight. It's, it's mind-blowing for four people, but, and, and they all look so young, so it's amazing that it happened. Um, but um, I'll go through a quick, very quick run-through. You know these guys, probably most of you. Chuck, A4CW, of course, is a pass powerful president and officer in many other aspects. Um, he's won several Georgia Cuso party plaques. He's our probably one of our most technical gurus in NARFL, antenna expert and installer. And probably one of the things we prize most is he's helped a lot of people put up antennas. Um, Tim Lemon, WK4U, 
uh, I'm going to call all three of these guys rover extraordinaires, and he has a share of GQP plaques. But he works a lot uh, behind the scenes on many NARFL initiatives and sometimes in the front lines. Um, he's a great CW operator, but what I always enjoy most is when we go to the schools and school nights and Tim gets there with the straight key and gets all the little guys and he has them going for hours and I think he has more fun than they do, so we appreciate that. Uh, Max, and Tim, Max, and Mike are the Rover team and they have an amazing operation mobile in this party, QSO party. And Max also our Rover extraordinaire, has been licensed for over 30 years. Um, he comes to the club meetings when he can, we're glad he's here tonight. Uh, one thing to note I thought was pretty cool was he operated for two years from Jerusalem in 1989 to 1981. Hey, John. Oh, did I say our only rover team? Okay. Yeah. And uh, last, uh, and uh, but kind of I guess the maybe the captain because I use his truck. Uh, Mike, in, uh, another rover extraordinaire with multiple plaques in the Georgia QSO party, who's also, we value, probably mostly as our repeater guru and keeps our repeaters on the air along with the team, and uh, also known as a Texas barbecue expert. So I'll turn it over to Chuck, and uh, you guys run it any way you want with questions, whatever point you want. It's your floor. Thank you, John. Nice to be here tonight to talk about the George Cuso Party. How many of you have been uh, participants in the George Cuso Party? Let's raise your hand. Well, wow. I think we just, and you all signed up on the sheet in the back when you came in, right? Oh, okay. Well, we'll have a test on that in a little bit. Uh, Cuso Parties are kind of fun things. Uh, let me ask this just to set the stage. Who is not familiar with what a state QSO party is all about. I mean, don't be afraid, raise your hand. Come on, I know there's, come on, don't be afraid. Raise your hand. Okay, there's a few, all right. Well, just to get everybody on the same page. State QSO parties are a, an opportunity for a state to become the center of the world in terms of amateur radio. You get to be, for a weekend, the wanted entity uh, that everybody else in the United States and Canada in particular would like to contact. So that's what we're going to do on the 14th and 15th of April, is we're going to have the George Cuso Party. And those of us who are going to be stations participating in the George Cuso Party will be wanted by every other station in the, the U.S. and Canada, and some DX stations as well. So. Uh, the primary interest for us is the U.S. states and the U.S. and the Canadian provinces, and by the way, Washington D.C. happens to be a entity in this case. So there are a total of uh, 50 states, 13 provinces, and one Washington D.C. for a total of 64 opportunities to make a uh, a new contact in a place that counts in a special way, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. All right. So. <clears throat> this uh, Georgia QSO party thing is where the world wants to be uh, talking to Georgia. And uh, as I mentioned, the primary places we're going to want to interact with are states and provinces, and hopefully Washington, D.C. Uh, the the uh, event happens on April the 14th and 15th. That's a Saturday and a Sunday. It's not a 48-hour event like some contest. Uh, it's only 20 hours, 10 hours each day. As you can see, it starts at 2 p.m. on Saturday, goes to midnight, and on Sunday starts at 10 a.m., goes to 8 p.m. So you get plenty of time to rest in between. And there's a question I see in the back. Uh, are those Eastern times or UTC? Those are Eastern times, yeah. Eastern, uh, whatever time, daylight or time, whatever, whatever. Yeah, Eastern something time. Uh, so, uh, and we encourage you to operate as much as you can, or if you can't because you've got conflicts otherwise, operate when you can. If it's an hour, two hours, three hours, that's great, that's fun. Uh, the uh, QSO party is a contest of sorts, and so you get to choose what mode you'd like to operate in. You can operate in uh, a single side band or CW, or you can operate what's termed mixed mode where you use both CW and, and, and side band, and some advantages to running both, and we'll mention that in a moment as well. Uh, the, Hello. 
Well, that's it, Chuck. Good job. I just <laughs> Oh, there we go. Well, <laughs> what did you do? Thank you, Steve. All right. The, uh, there is a bonus for this event, though. You get a chance in one weekend to work all states. How about that? How many, how many would like to have worked all states and haven't? All right, there, okay, now, there's, here's another reason your name needs to be on the paper at the back of the room, so you'll be a part of the Georgia Cuso party. Uh, literally, literally, you can't. Was there a question? Yeah, do you have to be a member to, to sign up? To Absolutely the not. No, but to, uh, <laughs> to sign the paper on the back. No, you can, you can sign the paper, right. yeah. You don't have to be a member of NARFL to participate in the Georgia Cuso party. That's open to all the hams in Georgia. Uh, and all hams in Georgia have the opportunity to, to have their points uh, assigned to a club. And so we ask all of you who are going to participate here tonight, uh, when you get finished with your uh, operation and you submit your score, you, as a part of the submission of the score, you say, I'd like my points to count toward the North Falls and Aperture Radio League. And you can be a member of any other club to do that. All right. All right, a little bit of history. Uh, anybody remember when this the George Cusa party was uh, initiated. Well, this is the 50, if I'm my math, see me right, 59th running of the George Cusa party. It was initiated in 1960 by Rusty Epps. Uh, he and a band of folks got together and said, why don't we do one of these things that other states are doing and see if we can't get on the map. And it's really been successful. It's now being sponsored by the SEDX club and the uh, Southeast Contest Club are the, are the sponsors that administer the George Cuso party every year. And it has become among the top three Cuso parties in the nation. So we will have more stations on the air making more contacts than almost every other state in the country. And we'll be among the top three. When we finish, we don't know where we'll be, but among the top three almost certainly. All right. Uh, now, the Cuso parties happen to be attractive to another group of people called county hunters. Anybody heard of county hunters? Oh, I, oh, Jim has heard of county hunters. What's a county hunter, Jim? Well, that's people that hunt counties. <laughs> <laughs> that really is, that illuminates the subject, Jim. <laughs> well, all right, how many counties are there in Georgia? 159. I think only Texas maybe has more. Is that right? That's right. 254. 254. Well, you're bigger than everybody, right? <laughs> what else can you say? But it's 159 counties. And there are crazy people out there that try to work every county in the United States. They have done so. Anybody know how many there are in the whole United States? 3,079. 3,000 and some odd counties. And unfortunately, Bill Barr isn't here tonight. Okay. We're going to have some fun with this, but he's not here, I don't think. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. Well, Bill Barr is one of those people that has worked every single county in the United States of America. Right. And CUSO Party is, is the primary way he managed to do that. Because there's a, every county tends to be represented in most CUSO parties. All right. Now, last year we had a little over 30 participants. And our goal this year is to have way more than that. Yeah. Not just because we want to have a big score, but because this really is a fun event. This is an event where you get to be, as I said, the center of the universe in terms of where folks want to come make contact. So you get to be kind of like the DX station in a DX expedition. You kind of get to be the DX station without having to leave home, unless you want to be a rover. Uh, and uh, as, a, and the part, as a part of that, we ended up, uh, a lot of our Norfolk members uh, have won plaques as uh, John talked about. Here's one plaque that uh, was, uh, it has here, first place Georgia multi-single QRP. Now who do you think might have won that plaque? W4QO. Well, but not alone. This was a multi-single event, which means there were multi-operators operating a single transmitter. And the other three participants were students from Mill Springs Academy, the other three operators at the station. So three kids and Jim, well, mostly three kids, one, one multi-single QRP. All right. <laughs> now, we've all, uh, NARFL also has uh, won, as Chaz so graciously mentioned, NARFL has won now the, the gavel for having the best club score for eight out of the last nine years. And, uh, of course, you, uh, you just saw what the gavel looks like and the whole rack full of them is the back. We didn't do it in 2012 because we decided to take a break and let somebody else have a chance. 
And who wanted that? I think it was Gars. Do you happen to remember that chance? Mm -hmm. Not off the top of my head, but I think you're right. I, I think, think it was Gars, the Gwinnett Amateur Radio Society. All right. So lots of opportunities for plaques. Now, uh, okay, there are lots of ways to go win a plaque. It's not just one plaque that gets given out. There are 18 ways to win something in this event. You can operate single sideband, you can operate CW, you can operate single sideband and CW, which is called mixed. Uh, you can operate high power, which is above 150 watts. You can operate uh, high power, which is 50, 150 or less, or you can, uh, uh, or you can operate uh, QRP. So you can pick your category to operate in based upon the, the capabilities of your station or your particular interest. Or you can be like uh, Mike and his crew are going to be out roving, and you can rover as a phone sta as a phone station, a CW station, or again a mix station. And you can do like Jim and the kids did. You can operate a multi single station uh, in either high power or low power. Now they don't have a QRP category for some reason this year. Apparently, I won it too many times. I guess that's <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, probably right. <laughs> the guy who makes the plaque simply refused to make one for him, I think is just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we know where to look. <laughs> and you can have, uh, so this was a multi-operator with one transmitter. There's also, you can have multi-operator and multi-transmitters. Apparently there is a category of that too, if somebody wants to enter that. So there's lots of possibilities of how you might want to operate. All right, now what's the, you know, if you're going to do a contact in the George Cuso party, if you've never done it, what does it, what does it look like? Is the is this where you do rank you and you talk about the weather and you say how's the, how's how's everybody's health? <laughs> when did I have last have lumbago? <laughs> Not exactly. So what's the Cuso exchange look like in a, in the George Cuso party, which is pretty typical of most contests. It's very succinct. Uh, as a Georgia station, you say G, uh, CQ George Cuso party Kilo Four November K Four N. And you'd say that pretty speedily. You don't waste time. CQ George Cuso Party, uh, Kilo 4 November, K4N. And you may add a few more words to that. Kaz just says, any station, anywhere, right, Kaz? To remind folks that anybody's eligible to call the George Cuso Party. Then you hope for some, then you listen for folks to call back. Now, once you get something going, and one way to get that do this is you spot yourself. It's legal in this particular event to go to one of the spotting networks and say, I'm on uh, 7.185 and uh, come find me. And it's amazing when you do that, you will suddenly have a small pileup or a big pileup sometimes. So you will get a pileup of folks calling. You hear somebody calling that says, I'm K9LOF. And you say K9LOF 59 Fulton FULT if you're on sideband because you respond with a four letter response identifying the county you're in in Georgia. In the case of Cobb, of course it'd be Cobb, C-O-B-B, -B, and there's a four letter abbreviation for every county in Georgia. And you say, how do I know that? Well, I'll show you in a minute. All right, and the other station comes back and says, uh, K4N, 59 Indiana. Now you don't record Indiana, you record the official abbreviation for Indiana, which is I N, correct. So you record I N. And uh, you simply go back and say K9LOF, thank you, and 73, uh, <coughs> K4NQRZ. Okay, everybody know what QRZ says? It says, who's calling next? Presuming you're going to be in a pileup, you want to just say, okay, some, whoever's in that pileup, call me back. So that's the exchange. Uh, you can make that exchange in about 10 seconds if you want to. You can take 30 seconds if you like. You can operate at whatever speed is comfortable for you. If you really like contesting, you'll probably do the exchange in about 10 seconds. If you're a, a more casual, you might take 30 seconds, and that's okay. You do whatever is fun for you. All right, now, uh, last year was the 40th anniversary of North Fulton Amateur Radio League. Everybody remember we had a pretty big celebration to uh, kind of so, to be just happy about having been around for 40 years. We talked about the history of the club and how we got where we are now. And, we're thankful for the great membership we have now as a result of some really nice things that have happened over the 40 years. But uh, last year we uh, decided to celebrate our birthday, our 40th birthday, by getting five special event call signs. Uh, that was November 4, NARFL, N-F-A-R. 
So we had N4, you know, F, N4, A, N4, A, F, R, L. We had five special event call signs. That was such a good idea that it was, it, and it was received very well that we decided we'd double our luck this time. So we now have 10 special event call signs that spell N, F, A, R, L. Uh, K4 and N4. So we'll have 10 stations using special event call signs. And the goal of those 10 stations is number one, be on the air as much of that 20 hours as they can muster and make lots of cue subs. Because we would like to win the gavel again, but more important than that, it's just fun to win. Whether you might get a gavel or not, it's just fun to win. Well, and it's also fun if you've not had the pleasure of operating in a, in a situation where you got stations calling you so fast you have a hard time answering so many in a, in a short period of time it's just it's a it's a it's a thrill so uh, if you've never done it think about what it might be if you don't like to operate high speed things don't worry about that operate slow that's fine too uh, we, will, uh, we of course those stations will work both sideband and CW and mixed and uh, by the way uh, as a Georgia station, you're eligible to also work any of those N4 something stations or K4 something stations. And if you work all, for, all enough to spell NFARL, you get a special certificate uh, that uh, you can hang on your wall. All right, any questions so far? All right, here are the, here are the special event call signs and the, and the leaders of each of those. That will be the, the primary operator of those stations. Uh, these are the N4 stations. You can see W4JR and his team will have the, uh, a station that will be operating both CW and phone in their rover. Uh, you got W4QO, uh, N4TOL, who, uh, both of those operating mixed mode stations. Uh, Bob Beeman will be doing uh, CW as well as Pavel will be running a CW station. Uh, the uh, K stations uh, we'll, we'll have one mixed mode station, uh, which is Mark, KJ4YM. Uh, the remainder of us, Steve, uh, oh, Steve Scott, uh, Laurie, and Daryl, and myself will be operating sideband station. Yes? I'll do CW, but I'm going to be QRS. QRS. What's QRS mean, Scott? Slow. Slow, okay. Well, I'll do words a minute. <laughs> All right, so you'll be mixed mode. Yes, sir. Okay, John. Good news. All right. So those are the special call sign stations. Now, uh, yes. Will all those special stations uh, spot themselves? I hope so. What do you think, guys? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Is that? I tell you, that's a key, sure. key uh, thing to do to uh, <laughs> to get, to get a bunch of folks calling you because folks just look at the spotting networks and say, "Oh, there's Georgia." bang, and you literally get bunches of calls. Yes, sir. You know, you might mention that in addition to us self-spotting, anybody who hears us or works us can also spot us so that more people know we're out there. That's right. Good thing. All right. Chuck? Yes, sir. Do they, to get the special award, they have to work all 10 of these, right? No, sir. You only have to work N-F-A-R-L in any combination, right? It can be either K or N's, right? Okay. So just N F A R L. It can be a gold star. A gold. Oh. <laughs> like the gold gavel? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So how do you join this uh, elite group? Yes. So what bands are you, are you mostly on, or are they all bands? Or? It's all of the contest bands. Okay. All okay. Bands. Which so are. Yeah, like field day, just like all the bands that are eligible for field day. Uh, it, you know, you can probably guess that 10 meters and 15 meters might not be really hot. Uh, 40 meters is probably going to be the new 20 meters this year. Uh, but there will be activity on 20 meters, I'm sure. And 80 meters will be really active at night. Uh, and, uh, and maybe 160. Yes, sir. Officially, the Georgia QSO party recognizes 80, 40, 20, 15, 10, and 6. Ah. But... We have tried to make six meter contacts for the last three years, and zilch. All right. And, and ten almost never opens. Fifteen sorta if you can monitor fifteen while you're doing something else. Otherwise, it's twenty, forty, and eight. 
Right. In my experience, that's been where those are the three money bands in years past, and I suspect the 20 used to be the really good money band, and I suspect it will shift a little bit more toward 40 meters as being the prominent band if you had to pick one out of the three. We're, we're lucky in that being east of the Mississippi, there are a lot of stations you can work during the day on 40. Right. Okay. Now, how do I get how do I get to be a part of this? Well, it's pretty simple. Number one, and I've said this about eight times already, sign up the piece of paper on the table at the back. Just and the reason we want you to do that is just so we know who you are and that you're interested in doing it. And as based on that, we will then circulate among you all sorts of tips, techniques, ideas, thoughts, uh, kind of common things that we might want to do together to help make you have more fun and uh, help us collectively get a better score. So. That's the reason we really want you to sign up. Yes? Put the paper next to the cookies. That was better. <laughs> All right. So sign up. Now, you can operate from your own home station as, as a single operator. You can invite a friend to come over and operate with you. If you do that, you become what's called multi-single, more than one operator operating a single uh, transmitter. Uh, or you can operate just by yourself. Now, we're also going to... Uh, uh, ask the special call sign uh, operators if they would invite or uh, if folks to come over and operate their stations uh, during the uh, during the event. So uh, that we're not asking you to say which one you'd like to operate, but if you say I'd like to operate on a team station or one of the special event stations, we'll work to get you paired up with one of the special event stations so you can come over and perhaps spell that station and uh, give the the owner of the station and operator the chance to rest and you get on the air. So that's another way to do it. And, uh, and if you don't feel like operating at all, but you just like to learn how this thing works, sign up too. Come over and just observe. See what's going on. Learn how it's done by watching and learning. And by the way, they might enjoy if you go out and bring them some soft drinks and cookies and snacks or whatever along the way. Okay, so what do you need to participate in this? You need, what do you need? You need about a million dollar station, big antennas, all that stuff? No. No. Uh, all you need is a good 100 watt transceiver, uh, an antenna that's workable, that works. Uh, the most important thing besides a radio is a really good logging program. Because if you're, if you're working a contact every 10 seconds, you, got, you can't spend a lot of time and effort figuring out how to log them. Or even if you do it every 30 seconds, you'd like it to be quick and easy. So you want a logging program that makes it really easy to capture what you're gonna, the uh, contact you just made. And that's all you need. Now if you kind of get serious, you might want to have, yes, Chaz? Antennas wouldn't hurt. Well, I said you just had to have a workable antenna. Right? <laughs> yeah. And Chaz, you work 100 watts, don't you? Yes. Sir. All right, and you have a big score every year, don't you? Yes, sir. All right, so there you go. I you have a good antenna. That's works all 20 hours, too. That's part of it. That's part of it. It works all 20 hours. All right. And you have a pretty good antenna. But you don't have to have the world's best antenna, and you don't have to work 20 hours to, to rack up a decent score and have a lot of fun. All right. Optionally, if you're going to try to work 20 hours, it's probably helpful to have a voice here. I don't think you use one, though, do you, Chess? You do. Okay. You didn't sound like it, but I guess you do. All right. I do. It's helpful to just push the button. And you can push the button every 10 seconds or every 5 seconds or whatever you want that says CQ. Uh, that's kind of helpful. It's not hard to do. You can do that with your sound card and your computer. doesn't take anything really special to do that. All right, so that's all you need to participate. Now, uh, logging programs. I mentioned that you need one. You need a good one. You need one that's fast and easy to use. There are several. Uh, one uh, that we like in particular is N3FJP. It's not free, it costs $8.99, but it'll be the best $8.99 you'll ever spend if you're going to do the Church Cusa party. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute how it works, or how it looks at least. Uh, there's also, if you're a contester already, you probably have N1MM Plus, and you know what that is, and you probably would want to use that because you already know about it and use it. If you're not a contester and don't have it, uh, it can be a little bit of a pain to put together. Uh, so I'd suggest probably not trying to do that, go, go with one of the others. And then lastly, Chaz has written his own software to do this. He thinks it's the best in the world. What do you think? I'm happy with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting rich off of it. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he makes big money. Or as they used to say, good money. What's good money anyway? It's, it's, it's used to bad money. money. 
It okay. changes as your life. Okay. But uh, Chaz has a program. It's, it's a DOS-based program, but apparently very good. It as runs, well. runs in all versions of Windows. Runs all ver runs in all versions of Windows as well. Okay, so you have a choice, uh, and let me show you a little bit about one of them. This is N3 FJP, and this is the screen you would use to. Uh, <coughs> log this is the only screen you'll ever use when you're running N3 FJP, and uh, see where the yellow is right here. That's where you record the contact. That's the call sign that calls you. That's the state they're in. That's the only two things you enter. The 5-9 is automatic, unless you really want to change it. Uh, but all you enter is that and that, and press the enter key, and you've logged the contact. Now, if it happens to be in Georgia, you skip over the state. This is the state province or uh, uh, field. You just skip over that, and it will say, OK, put in the Georgia County, if you happen to contact the Georgia County. So you do that, and you put in the county, or you can put in the county abbreviation, or you can, you can see here, it's really nice. It gives you the, the names of all the counties, all 150 out of them. Yes, sir, Scott? Is it click and load? Is it yes. click and load? If I click on B-A-R-T-O-W, does it load it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Say that again, Scott. Barco. B-A-R-T? If I click on... Oh, if you, I've never tried that. Yes. It does that? If you click on the county, yes, it loads it. Well, there you go. So if you don't know how to spell it, I guess you scroll down the list and yes. we find it, and then you click on it. Right? Well, all the abbreviations aren't always intuitive. No, they're not. They're a little odd. So it's helpful to have. Otherwise, I, before without using this, I printed out the whole list of 159, and then you have to go to do this to try to, you know, which, where, what's the abbreviation? So this is really pretty nice to show you that. Also shows you DX stations you operate, and it keeps track of your score over here. And one, one cool thing you got to know when you're doing a uh, contest or this event in a QSO party, you get things called multipliers. Everybody know what a multiplier is? Anybody not sure? Not sure. Well, okay. I know they're not some that don't. A multiplier is it is a is a way to multiply your score for almost for free. Every state and province in, the, in Washington, D.C. counts as a multiplier. So there's 64 multipliers. So if you work all, all the states and provinces in Washington, D.C., your multiplier is 54. 64. 64, excuse me. 64. And let's say you have, you only made those 64 contacts plus 30, what, 36 more. You had 100 total contacts. So what would your score be? It'd be 100 times 64, 6,400. So you just multiplied your 100 contacts into 6,400 just because you worked all of those multiplying entities. So it's really, it's really fun to go say, okay, I, I could really. It's really fun to watch your score. You watch one more entity, and your score doubles just by that. Yes. Does the uh, other entity have to log somehow? No. Their contact? No. There is no checking, cross-checking of logs. So. Whatever you log, whatever you know, your voice log is or CW log, uh, CW actually, change is, you log and that's the record, but you log. Actually, the new software that they run now does do a cross check to try to make sure to validate the log. Really? Yeah. But only for those people that send in a log. Well, of course. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that's the point. The other guy you work doesn't have to send his log. No, in. I made a couple Virginia not. contacts last weekend, and I feel bad for not submitting a Virginia that's log. Okay. I just did that's like all right. They get credit. Yeah. yeah. The only but thing I guess. It in, if you send it in, yeah. then there is a cross checking to see gotcha. if you got the same. Which line. is why the plaque, the example, and plaques were not available until now. Oh. Because that piece of software was a pain in the butt. I didn't write it, so I can't take any credit or blame. <laughs> okay. All right. But by and large, if you log it, it's a, it, it counts. Okay. So uh, that's all you got to do. It's easy to use, very easy to use. All right. So some tips here really quickly, and I'll get going. Uh, you want to be calling CQ almost the entire time. I've never worked a station without calling CQ that I can think of right now. Uh, but that's because Georgia stations in demand. You call CQ, you get an answer. Uh, much more so than if you go around looking for somebody outside the state and wondering where Georgia is. Uh, uh, you want to be able. To, you want to change bands frequently. You'll you'll find out that uh, you will work all the stations that are happen to be looking for Georgia on 40 meters, and you're not getting any responses. So go to 20. That's a new fishing hole. Go fish in a new part of the lake. 
uh, and you'll be amazed at how, how you'll start getting contacts again. And you, you fish out 20, and if, the, if it's the time of day is right, go to 80 and fish that out. Yes, sir, Scott? Clarify band and mode multipliers. Uh, you, it's not a multiplier, but you can work uh, a station. On, uh, you can work them once on a band. You can work them again if you do it on a different mode. So you can work them on the same band with Psi band and CW. And you can go to any other band and do the same thing. So you can work the same station on uh, all of the bands, which is how many? Did you count up six bands or so? Yeah, they'll all be over. You can work the same station 12 times, and that counts as 12 points. And if you operate mixed mode, there's 128 multipliers. That's right. Oh, good point. Thank you, Mike. That's one advantage of mixed mode is that instead of just a, 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 a maximum of 64 possible multipliers, you now have a 128 possible multipliers. So your score really hits big. And you'll see that the guys who do... Gavel! Gavel! <laughs> <laughs> you'll see the guys that operate mixed mode will have big scores. All right. Yes, sir. Is there a limit as to how long you need to stand on them? Stay on the band before you can move? Or no, there's no, you can stay there one minute or an hour or whatever. Until Grumpy runs you off. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. I was just going to add that when I was a rover last year, I was on 40 99% of the time. Okay. I've never, I made. As long as, well, but as a rover, you were changing counties. Right. But so. Yeah. That's a whole other ballgame. That's a whole other ballgame. When you're a rover, and these guys will talk about that in a minute, uh, it, is, it is a whole new story. So I'm sure Matt, you guys are going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, change bands. Uh, use the four-character abbreviation for in the counties in Georgia. There's four-character abbreviation for every county. And a lot of times the, the out-of-state stations won't know what the, what the abbreviation for Cherokee is unless you tell them. All right, uh, switch between phone, as we just talked about, phone and CW. If you're capable of doing multi, you get lots more points that way. And uh, if you have an out-of-area call, if you have a three-area call, a Whiskey 3, Whiskey Lemur, for example, you might want to say Stroke Cobb or Fulton or whatever county you're in, Wes. Uh, and uh, you want to practice before you before the accuser party starts. Get used to the software, get used to the logging program, make sure everything's hooked up right and working. And you can go to the Georgia QSO Party, Georgia QSO Party .org, and there's a nice website, gives you all the rules, gives you all the information you need you know, beyond what we're talking about tonight. Including, for example, one of the you know, sort of suggested frequencies on each band as a starting point to use to go uh, make contacts. And you can go anywhere you want, but it's a suggested spot that's made available to all the Georgia folks and all the folks outside of Georgia. Yes, Steve? Uh, it'll also, the, web, the website will give uh, the locations of the rovers, too. You've got a, oh. nice, a nice map plus a listing. Yeah, it gives a map of the rovers, that's right. All right, all right, now. <laughs> I hope you're getting the message. <laughs> uh, sign up to operator station, uh, whether it's your own station or a special call sign station if you want to join one of those stations. Uh, but just get ready to have some fun. This is a fun event, and if you've never done it, I really highly recommend it. All right, thank you all. Yes, sir. What's your first name? Bob. 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 What level license? He's a technician. Oh, my goodness. Well, I guess that leaves you out, doesn't it? No. Oh, no? no. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> no. Then, remember he said you can go and operate from another station, like my station, for example? Oh, okay. You can come to my station. I'll be the control operator. You use whatever my N4 thing is, okay. N4 or L or F or something, and I'll be the control operator. Okay. Okay, and when we win, You'll get your call sign on the plaque too. That's right. So this this uh, plaque right here, which had three old, students from Mill Springs, design. those are all technician licensees that won this multi-single plaque QRP. So yes, if you're a technician, don't yet have your general or extra license. Uh, don't think that leaves you out the cold on this contest. You guys are you guys can come operate one of the either the the uh, special event call sign stations. Or if you've got a friend who's a general and extra, go operate their station. Is there a multiplier for QRP? No. Okay. Unfortunately.
but all right. You didn't mention that CW is twi two points for. I did not. I think that's a heresy, but. You know. <laughs> not my decision, but two points for every CW contact versus one for every side. That's correct. And for the casual operator, remember if if you work all these counties or these special call signs, it just counts Georgia. So don't get too hung up on that, because your multipliers come from other other states. That's right. It's it's always nice to work a few Georgians in there and give them contacts, but. Uh, in the past, we've had people just looking for Georgia stations from our club. Well, you just get one multiplier for that because one Georgia only counts one time. Right. Good advice, Jim. We, we will have Georgia stations contacting us to spill an Yeah. Right. 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 That will happen. Yeah. But don't don't you as you know, don't go well, out and major on trying to work on the Georgia stations. Look for states. Look for stations outside to get your multiplier count up. Right. Yes, Chance. One last comment. Those who have operated the contest for years may not be aware there's a rules change this year that to qualify for the awards program, you have to make at least 50 contacts. We've had cases where some very small subscription people have made 10 contacts and won a plaque. That's not going to happen anymore. You've got to make at least 50 contacts to qualify for it. Right. Good reward. Good reward. Was there no? Yes. Is there, yes. is there a multiplier for portable power? Nope. Not for portable, no. No? No. Yes? Do you, if you only operate in two locations, you know, the same radio in two locations, is that considered a rover? If it's or, two different counties. Oh, it's the same county. As, only have to operate from two counties to qualify as a rover. Right. Got to be at least two counties. Okay, but if you operate in the same county, then no. that's okay. Yes, you can, you can operate multiple places in one county, but you're not a rover. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay, anything else? Is there one county that's really sought after it, it historically? Uh, there's there's a lot of the counties that are sought after. We have a lot of counties where we're the only operator in the county. Well, that's what I'm asking. For the, the contents? Yeah. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll be in about 58 right. counties. Well, let me turn this mic over to the, uh, the Rover team and let you guys be with it. Yeah. Right, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Max and 5ZZ. So, Tim and I and Mike have operated uh, as one of the rover teams now for several years. Uh, I started out as a driver, been operating now maybe four years, five years, Mike. How long, how long have we been running as a rover? You've been driving me around for about eight years. It's like driving Miss Daisy, yeah. And then finally, I got tired of that. I said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do some operating too. So, we're going to try to give some tips to everyone in the room um, regarding some, just some of the things that we've learned uh, from experience. And your mileage may vary, so I'm just going to go ahead and start rambling about some of the things we've learned. Uh, how many people really know what DX is? Um, I know a lot of the, the folks in the room do, but DX, a wise contester once told me, DX is any country you've not worked, you don't have a QSL card for. Right? And I thought, that's, that's pretty accurate. So, how many people here have operated as a DX station? Raise your hand, please. Okay. With DX, typically our experience here in the States is, is we're trying to break through a pileup. We're trying to break through and get through to, to get the QSO and make the contact. With the DX station, you're, you're trying to pick, call, call something out of the herd, so to speak, and you're trying to pick a signal out and respond to that person. You're trying to do it as quickly as you can because you want to work as many contacts as you possibly can. So when we rove uh, from a CW perspective, uh, we, we're, we're putting as many counties as we can on um, that either they're rarely, they, they have, don't have any operators in them, or they don't have any infall or any infall operators because we want to contribute the points to the club in, in our effort to win the contest. So with that, CW is the mode that we utilize, and some of the things that we, we like about CW is it's quiet operating. So, you know, when Tim's over there in the seat next to me, and he's, I can't hear a thing he's listening to, he can't hear me, you know, you can't hear the other contacts, et cetera. So it's it's kind of it's actually kind of peaceful. You're just you're, you're in the zone and you're running, um, and you're working. You're you enter that county and you're trying to make just as many contacts as you possibly can, because we average at least 50 counties. I think Mike has said we we've, we've worked as many as 58. That's in 20 hours. So you get 20 hours, and we're trying to put on as many counties as we possibly can. 900 miles. 900 miles, right? So it's uh, we'll. So one of the things that, that I I was going to mention is. Um, you're the DX, they want to contact you, 
uh, you you would be amazed at the pileups, and it's just not something we typically experience over here. And two of the calls I always hear as soon as we move into a new county is I always hear John in Fort TOL. I hear him right away. And there's some some German super contest, or I can't remember what his call is, but you're getting called you're getting called them all over the world. It's not just in the states, so it's a lot. Of, yeah, always. And it's just a lot of fun. So you get to work uh, folks up from all over the world. Um, Everyone does it a different way, but one of the things that I do, if you hear somebody say, so whenever we're moving from one county to the other, what I'll typically do is I'll send like three Vs. I'll send da 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 and I'll send QRX, which means stand by, because we're getting ready to announce that we're in a new county. And so I try to convey to the folk, to the pilot, that we're, we're just crossing the, the boundaries from one county, we're moving into another, and kind of, and what happens is the moment that you, you move from one county as a rover into the new one, particularly these, these rarer counties, the pileups are just amazing. It's everybody screaming, and you're you're trying to to pull that person out to communicate directly with them, log them, and move on. And so when we talk about tips, dupes. If you got a strong signal, they just keep calling you over and over. I'll work them. Just I work the dupe. Just do it. Hit enter. Get them out of the way. Um, what are some other things I was going to say? Uh, you, again, you are isolating some of the, the folks. If you, so I heard somebody talk about CW operating in the back. But they're talking about they're going to operate QRS. If somebody's skills are, are better than mine, if they're faster than me, we'll tell them slow down. I'll say QRS, slow down. They'll slow down a little bit. Now you're working, the swath of, of skill sets is, it's all over. you got some folks that operate CW every day, and they're really good. Um, I think we're all competent CW operators, but obviously there's a lot of CW operators a lot faster and better than me, so I'll tell them to slow down. And on the other hand, if, if, I, if it's obvious that they're, they're a new CW operator, I'll slow down. And if I hear them, I'm going to work them. So it doesn't. We'll we adjust our speed to to the operator that's trying to call us. So there's that. Um, lessons learned about power. So when I say power, in this instance, I'm not talking RF power, uh, W4QO. I'm talking electrical power. So when Mike, uh, I think we're going to have some images of. I think we're going to have some images of the vehicle that we operate out of in the, in the radio situation. I'm not going to go into a lot of details. Um, it will be available after the meeting, so if folks have questions about this. But I think we have a pretty good setup. Mike actually drove this. Um, he's the one that, that got us started with the flexes, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But one of the one of the points I'd make to you is, is note that we like the radios facing forward because if we need to do anything, if we need to reset the radios or anything, I can just reach back over the chair and do it. So that is a good point. Um, I think the biggest point is. The, one of the biggest things that I would uh, advise is, last year I was on the phone with Mike, and Mike said something to the effect, I'm going to see you on such and such a date for the George Q so party, and we'll meet at the rally point, point. we're going to go. And I said, yeah, okay. And then, as I'm hanging out, I look over at my XYL. Do you guys all know what XYL is? All right. <laughs> my XYL looks at me, she goes, I said, I said, no what? She goes, no, we're going to the north towards the mountains that weekend. And I call Mike, Mike, I'm not going to make it this year. <laughs> so, the other day, my, my wife looks at me and she goes, are you going to on the rover party with Mike and Tim this year? And I said, yes, I am. I am. Right? She goes, yeah, you are. So we're good. <laughs> Get that out of the way. Right? Uh, power. I was going to get back to power brain a little bit. So we, we actually, what you'll see in a, in a subsequent photo is we actually have UPS systems in here. And on the back, what do we call these things in Texas? We call them a, a trailer hitch racks, right? So there's a trailer hitch rack on the back of Mike's Suburban. What you call it? I call it a bustle. A bustle. Well, so there's there's a trailer hitch back that was popular in Texas when Mike and I lived uh, there years ago. And so we're like, why don't we just strap a generator to the back of that thing? And we did. And so it works really well. So we have power cables that go out. What's funny is we have these UPS systems, and we typically, we try to remember to fuel the generator up every five, five hours or so. But when you hear the UPS is beeping, you fail to do that. So that's a lesson learned, all right? So beep, 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 stop operating, all right? And then we'll take care of that. So. Well, keep operating. Well, we need we need fuel, so we take care of that. Um, keyboards versus paddles. So Mike Mike keeps trying to convince me. I like to use paddles. I'm old school when I'm sending CW. And and honestly, I was having this conversation with Mike, and I said, you know, there's only every operator's really good, but every once in a while we get a lid, and if you know what a lid is, they're not not such a good operator yet. And they'll do some things, and when they when they're interrupting or they're responding when we haven't called them, we're trying to speak to somebody else, it's me personally. I like to da 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 on the key on the paddle to say stop that, I'll get back to you in a moment. It's it's personal, so I need paddles. But what I've learned, honestly what I've learned is is uh, 
when we're going down these country roads and they're really bumpy and we've got potholes and stuff like that, you're you're hitting I'm hitting the keys and I'm gonna sound like a lid myself because I'm sending something that doesn't sound like horse code at all. It's no character, you know, you, somebody will make a sharp turn and do it. So I said, okay, I'm gonna try to use the keyboard more often. So I would focus on the keyboard or the commands if you're if you're actually operating CW. Um, I would say dress comfortably. You're going to be in an automobile for 20 hours, and so the last, not last year, but the year I participated before, I operated, we have two seats, two radios, two different antennas, you have a, a person driving, two CW operators in the back. You're in that seat for uh, 20 hours, right? You have a small break for the hotel, you get a few hours sleep, and then you get back on the road and you hit it again in the morning. So dress comfortably. Um, keep in mind that how you might want the automobile is not necessarily how your partner's going to want it. So take a jacket in case they just love the air conditioning and you don't. You know, but just dress comfortably. You're going to be there a long time. And along those lines, choose your friends carefully. Choose your operators carefully. You're going to be stuck in a vehicle for 20 hours, right? You're going to be in a hotel room with them. So I'll just leave it at that. But it's a, it's a really great opportunity to make new, uh, new ham friends, though. And it's a really good opportunity to introduce folks to the George Cusa party and to it's a roving in general, but so I, I kind of say that tongue in cheek. But choose your friends carefully. Uh, let's see. It's speaking of introducing folks to ham radio. We'll, we've noticed that we'll stop for lunch or for supper on the first day of the contest, and we have a lot of young people approach us, and, and they see the antennas. It looks like a porcupine when you look at the vehicle. I mean, you can imagine this is not something you typically see, right? So we'll have folks come up to us and they're asking us about the uh, about the automobile and what we're doing. And it's a really good opportunity to introduce young people to the ham radio. On the other hand, you may be in the middle of nowhere in some little county, some you know, some county that, that really doesn't have a lot of ham radio presence. They're not used to seeing uh, automobiles that look like this. I think you're from the government. Yeah, so I, have, I, I like to have fun with that. So what they'll do is they'll approach you and they're kind of like, what's going on here? I can't say. It's Patriot Act related. You need to step away from the vehicle. <laughs> 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 but seriously, I would I would probably think about putting something on the on the automobile that says something about ham radio because I don't when I'm operating and I'm in a pileup, I don't have time to, to explain to the state trooper what I'm doing. And we've had state troopers tail us pretty closely. <laughs> Just keep an eye on it. Uh, the other thing I would say is is make sure you have plenty of sustenance. So in Mike's automobile, there is always like a Costco-sized jar of animal crackers. And he's very fond of the double stuffed Oreos, so we, we're running on sugar and caffeine for the most part. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything? Da, 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 da. I think that was it. So we have some other points that, that Mike is going to make and Tim's going to make. Uh, we're gonna, we'll be around afterwards, so if you have questions about the vehicle itself, this is what I was referring to. So we have this, this trailer hitch back here that goes in, and we strap the generator to it, we run the cords out. Uh, great antennas, Mike has you know, forgotten more about RF than most, certainly most of the people I know will ever know. So it's just a really premium setup, we think, and we're proud of it. And uh, you know, we enjoy running every year. So with that, any, any questions I, I can take? Yes, sir. Yeah, do you run split? We don't. Oh, no, yeah. sir, we don't. No, yeah. you don't run split? No, we don't. It's atypical. I, I don't know what this thing is. I asked Mike, what is what is this apparatus here? I have no idea. What is that? I've never seen it. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, any other questions I can help with? All right, well, thank you very much. If y'all have any questions afterwards, then just please find us with Yes, sir. I'm going to defer, I would say 20 probably. 40. 40? Okay, 40. That probably these days. In, in 40. This, this cycle uh, of uh, sunspots, 40 is the money band. And there are ham sticks, that are, there are ham stick antennas that I've used that are, are not that very expensive. And there's, there's mag mounts that you can use as well. But speak, see this gentleman after the, after the class, after the session, because <laughs> he'll answer any antenna questions you could ever, you know, ever think of. Any other questions I can help with or try to help with? <laughs> All right, well, thank you much. With that, I'm going to get, turn it over to W5JR, Mike Rosen. Good evening. I'll, I'll try to talk fast here. So we're going to do uh, 10 QSOs per, uh, per minute, right? Yes. Number one thing, uh, can you go back to that one picture that Tim was leaning over there with uh, in the back of the truck? Safety. Actually, there, there may be another picture. I don't know if Tim shared that. There, there's another one that has a closer up view of the uh, radios. More from the top. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me see here. 
It is. There you go. Well, that one will work. There's uh, this that one right there. That one. Awesome. So uh, the very first thing that's important if you're going to rover safety. You need to get all the equipment secure. You don't want missiles in case your driver has to make an ev evasive maneuver. You don't want missiles. So this happens to be a, a, a stair tread and some two by eights and then it is securely anchored to uh, one of the seat, uh, the back seat things that, that's been removed and all the radios are, are bungee down we have all the bandpass filters and the, uh, the, the wind keyers, the, uh, the router, yes, we have a router running the flexes, and there's a, a 4G uh, card in here so we can self-spot and all that kind of jazz. Power supplies are, are anchored down as well. This this will give us a lot of safety. Uh, I actually put a uh, another 2x8 or 2x10 across the front here as a crash bar because all of our luggage is back here and we don't want that to run into the uh, equipment and uh, remove a cord inadvertently. So safety is the very first thing. You don't want any missiles. All right, <clears throat> route planning. I don't have a slide for route planning. If you're going to be a rover, as, as mentioned earlier, operating from two counties qualifies as a rover. You can take your vehicle, go to a park, go to somebody else's house, you know, a, a relative's house in two different counties, operate from one county one day, another county the next day, you qualify as a rover. The thing about rovering is that every time you change counties, you can work the same stations you worked before all over again. And all of those that worked you in the previous county are emphatic to work you in the next county. That's the whole part of rovering. One year, one year I was a rover, and I worked uh, one station out of West Virginia in seven of my eight counties I worked for the weekend. Yes. So this DL3DXX, we work him in every county, on every band, on every mode. So in 50 counties across, you know, at least three bands and two modes, as soon as we cross a county line, He's one of the first ones to call us. He, he has figured out where we are and when, we, when we're going to be crossing counties. So, the, the, the route, we run 100 watts. We just run 100 watts. But since we're running two radios and our antennas, our mobile antennas, are only five feet apart. So you know how difficult it is to, to make two radios work at your home station. We had to figure out how to make this work in a, in a mobile. Most of y'all that are going to be doing roving are only going to be using one transmitter. So the complication factor is a lot less. I know uh, the, uh, the Cobb Mobile is planning to, to operate multiple stations as well. And, and they, they did the same thing. Uh, if you'll go back that one slide real quick. These are uh, bandpass filters like you've seen used for Narco Field Day. These are automatic. Whenever we change a band in the radio, it changes the filter. So we've got actual bandpass filters like you would have at a, at a fixed const contest station. We have those as, as part of our, our operation here. Why did I just want ID? <laughs> it's like I'm talking on a repeater. So uh, when you were doing route planning, you, you know, in, in our case, if you're going to do 50 counties over 20 hours, that means you need to spend less than 20 minutes per county. Some Georgia counties are bigger than that. <laughs> Some counties it takes 40 minutes to get across. And you don't want to break any of the uh, posted speed limits or you, you might be further delayed. So it's important to plan your route so that you can maximize the amount of time. There's some counties we just cross the corner of and we actually have to stop in order to get that 20 minutes in that county. So not every county we drive straight across. So when you're doing route planning, the first thing you need to, to, to decide, are you going to operate while you're in motion or you're going to drive to a location and operate from a stationary standpoint? If you're going to operate from a stationary standpoint, 
pretty me much means your number of counties won't be large because you're not going to be operating while you're driving. And if you're going to be by yourself, you're not going to be operating while you're driving. So you're going to drive to a location, operate, and then move to another location. You might get 10 to 15 counties by doing that. Scott? Uh, just checking Chad for uh, clarification. In the Georgia CUSO party, if you drive to a county, set up a dipole over some trees and operate, <coughs> pull it down, move to another county, set up a dipole and trees and operate, you're still a rover. Yes. That's correct. You don't have to have a mobile You don't antenna. have to have a mobile antenna on your vehicle to, to qualify as a rover. You have to operate from another county. <coughs> and you don't have to operate in motion. So you you can operate from two counties, one county each day, four counties, five counties, eight counties. Uh, so uh, define, you know, decide what your, your operation is going to be and then put together uh, the route that would support that. Uh, I, I usually spend, well, when we were doing the route that we, we've typically taken, that we've modified just a, a, a little bit from time to time to, uh, to capture a few counties depending upon other people that uh, drop out of their routes and we have to adjust. But the, the, the route, the first time I did the route, it took about a month and a half of planning to get it to where we could complete the route in less than 10 hours. Because you really need a, a route that has a driving time of, of about eight hours because you're going to stop for fuel, you're, you may not uh, drive as fast as you think you're going to drive for, due to traffic or missing a turn or, or whatever. So you want a driving time, if you're going to try to dr uh, drive through the process, you'll, you'll want a driving time of about eight hours. And <clears throat> good luck with that. <laughs> uh, I use streets and trips primarily to to plan by, uh, do my planning with, because it has good county line boundaries and has all the, the Georgia streets and roads that you're willing to drive on. Uh, in Georgia, they have marked very well every county crossing if you're on a state road or better. Some of the smaller roads, uh, not so much. They're uh, in, in some subdivisions or small farm area, rural areas, uh, you can go down a road to get into another county, but if you're in a, uh, not, not on a, a state road, it may not be marked. So you have to rely on your, your GPS. Um, Hi, you got a question? Yes. I'm just curious, do you start generally from your home vicinity or do you pre-plan the routes that you... We've done several. Uh, it, for, for us, uh, we start out southeast of town in uh, whatever the place is, in, uh, down towards uh, Newton uh, Rock. Rockdale. We start out in that direction, and then we go out through, down through uh, sort of southeast Georgia, down to uh, uh, Highway 16. And then at night, and, and we snake back and forth across a few counties that are, that are easy to, to get to down there. But most of our driving at night on Saturday night is actually on the interstates, just for safety reasons. We don't want to run into too many deer. Close calls, <laughs> Yes, we have. <clears throat> Way too close. Yes, Fred. Do you publish your route? We do. That's, it's a good straight man there. So, so once you've got that route and you figured it out, you want to share, make sure your driver is familiar with the route and it makes sense to them. Uh, we load preload GPSs uh, for the driver, and I kind of operate as a navigator. We're actually going to have four people in the vehicle this year. It's going to be really crowded, so we'll have a driver and a navigator and the two operators, and and we'll switch out the operator part of it. But at that point, you know, the, the GPSs will have, they have the, the, the county crossings on them, plus the operators in the back, they have a, we have a streets and trips map running with GPS on it so that we've got a little truck going along, along our route so we know in the back when we're crossing the county as well. 
but the driver needs to be familiar with the route so that they have some idea in their head where it's going. Since we've driven the roughly the same route for the last uh, three years, we've gotten pretty familiar with where it is, where the stops are, you know, people wave at us you know, when they go by, they go, oh yeah, it's those crazy guys. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in those in that route planning, you need to make sure that there's a fuel stop during the middle of the day, that there's some bio stops available. You, know, that you, you don't just show up in the middle of a, a cornfield someplace and you go, hmm, there's no gas station here. So you need to, to plan that and schedule it as well. Uh, if you're not operating the radio, you're not making QSOs. So it's it, it kind of important to keep keep the vehicle moving as much as possible. <clears throat> um, obviously, the more counties, the better, because you get to work everybody again from an, another county. That helps maximize your score score towards the gavel. Not that the gavel is all that important. <clears throat> <laughs> so, if, if you're agreeable to to working mixed mode. That's even even more because now you can get double the amount of uh, uh, multipliers. If you can, be sure you can self-spot yourself. You were asking earlier, where's the best place to do it? Virtually any place will work because all the spotting systems share the spots. So if somebody, we, we can always, the, the couple of years we operated before we were self-spotting, uh, easily self-spotting. We always knew when someone spotted us because the pilot showed up. We would cross a county line and we'd go, hello, so, you know, work a couple of stations, spot us, spot us, and then the onslaught would happen. Now that we are self-spotting, as soon as we cross a county, we self-spot and, and the pilot show up right away. There's, there's not a delay. Okay, is it one of you guys on, on the uh, keyboard that does the self-spotting then? We use N1 MM Plus for our logging program, and part of it has a Telnet oper uh, application on it that we can hit a button on our logging program here. One of the uh, <clears throat> this is this is one of the operator positions in our vehicle. You can see that all the the logging information here, the minimum stuff, the flex information here. One of these, one of the buttons in here will allow us to spot ourselves. We put in our county information here, hit spot, or put our call sign in and the county information, and hit spot. And we have a, a like I said, a, a 3G, 4G, whatever it is, uh, connection off of our router. So we self-spot just from the, from the logging program. So the, the, our operators do it for each band like that. Yeah, do you find that in these remote parts of Georgia that you have 3G coverage everywhere you go? It's kind of spotty in the places we go. <laughs> <laughs> so in those areas, we're definitely relying on the contacts that we make to spot for us. It's great when it works, but it's not fail-safe. Uh, one of the items that helps us, because we, we have, we're using N1MM with uh, N3FJP, similar. Every time you change a county, you've got to enter in the new information in your logging program so it will automatically update the information it sends. I use just painter's tape, put all the important uh, uh, control whatever codes on here, like control H, that's how we, you know, you, we just type control H and you enter in a, the new county abbreviation and all of our uh, Morse code macros are all updated and populated with the new county. Uh, down here, all the, uh, the function keys, these are what each one of these function keys actually sends. Again, just painter's tape. We've got the USB ports on the side labeled as what plugs into them so that they'll, the USB uh, system will remember what that particular uh, USB port was intended to be and not assign it another USB port number, COM port, that doesn't work anymore. <coughs> and we also have a list 
of all of the, call, the counties that we're going to be operating through in the order that we're going to be there with the county abbreviation and then the county name next to it. So when we change counties, we're not going, what's the, what's the abbreviation for, for, for Buck, Buckhead? What's the abbreviation for, uh, for Ben Hill? What do you think it's going to be for Ben Hill? You know, so you don't know, or like Irwin, E-R-W-I. So you know, most of the abbreviations are the first four letters, but not all of them, because there's some duplicates out of that. So we've got all the list of the counties. If you're going to, to do a lot of roving, just so that you're eased to, to transition from one county to the next. When you have your your list of counties that you know you're going to use. Go to the GQP website, georgiaqsoparty.org. On there, enter in the counties that you're going to be operating and what modes and what call sign. There's a place, a spot to do that. Uh, a, a friend of GQP will then put those on a Georgia map so that you can go and click on that county and it'll bring up a list of how many operators, for what days, what operators, and what days, and what modes will be in, in a particular county. It's very important to help everyone know, all the plant folks that are planning, that a particular route and county is covered, because some of us will then go in and tweak our, our routes so that we can pick up a county if somebody has to miss it. You know, it, it happens that some folks that had planned you know, a particular route, their you know, life happens and, and they're unable to participate in that particular weekend. So those of us that go to a lot of counties try to adjust and pick up. You know, if you're, in, in our particular case, uh, I don't want to spit, uh, steal Tim's thunder, but we, since we, we drive about 900 miles, go out uh, to, and we overnight, uh, out on the road, and then come back the following day. We overnight uh, near the Florida the, uh, border on I-95. That, that's our route. <clears throat> I have done it where I start from home. You know, with Max, it, it was it made it easy for us to start from home, do a big loop, come back Saturday night, stay overnight in our own beds, and then get get up uh, Sunday do another loop in a, in a different direction. You can't get as many counties in that way. You get more duplicates because those run around, around your house. In, in our particular case, we start outside the city because there's a lot of state, a lot of stations operating in Fulton, a lot of stations operating in DeKalb, a lot of stations operating in Cobb. So we just bypass all those and start heading towards the uh, the, uh, the rarer ones. And likewise, when we finish up, we finish up south of town uh, and not back into Atlanta proper. So, let's see what other pictures you got here that we need to. Yes. So you can see this, this is kind of our operating position where we have. <coughs> Two folks, again, I took a pine uh, stair tread, cut it in half. This is our desk, sits on the, on the knees. It's real comfortable. <coughs> it, it gets pretty old. The, the oak ones, by the way, are very heavy. Use the pine ones. <laughs> and uh, in, in our particular case, since we're using the flex radios, we don't have a radio control head anywhere. We just have just the laptops. The radio control is on, on the laptop. This is the, the flex knob that gives us a, a, a tuning indication, you know, if we need to do a little VFO work and a, a key handy if we, if we need to. Fortunately, these are nice and heavy. We, we really need to strap those down, but we're, we operate in motion and it is as Max said, it's virtually impossible to send CW with one of these things while you're bouncing around down the road. If you're on the interstate, not too bad, but if you're in other places and you're making these turns and those turns, bouncing up and down, 
have the same problem with typing in a, somebody's call sign. You hear a call sign, you start typing, you add extra letters, and you hit return to send it, and they go, no, 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 that's not my call sign. You, I know it's not. Hang on. These guys don't know code. They're terrible. <laughs> we just worked just you know five minutes ago in another county. What do you mean you don't know my call sign? Again, upload the counties that you intend to participate. Even if you're not roving, just as a single <coughs> working from home, upload your, your county and the days that you're going to operate. Tim? Yes. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So I get to share a couple of ideas with you all that, that makes roving fun. Hopefully we've convinced you that it is fun. You can operate from your house, and that's fun. But when you're able to go to county, to county, to county, to county, to county, and do it all over again, it's a whole lot more fun. So I'll share a couple of examples with you. Mike alluded to one of them just a minute ago. When we're operating, we're using Morse code, and we're probably averaging 25 to 30 words a minute average. So we're really, really rocking and rolling. Guess what else is rocking and rolling? The car. The car. <laughs> so what Mike said is very true. We'll be working, so, you know, we work three, maybe four different hams a minute. So we're moving right along. And, and, and all of a sudden you get a hard left turn, whoa, 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 or, or bumps or railroad tracks, or suddenly you got to slow down. And we're not watching where we're going because we're in our own little world. Um, so we'll hit, hit the wrong letter or our finger will bounce on the keyboard. And where's, the, where's that backspace key and all this? And people are waiting. You know, they're expecting us to come right back and we're trying to get it in correctly. When you're sitting at home on your desk, you don't have that. It's just perfectly still all the time. Now, Here's another example. How many of you have ever been in a car, driving down the road, listening to the AM broadcast radio, and all of a sudden you are <laughs> you can't hear the station that you're listening to anymore? How many, how many of you experienced that? Well, the same thing happens at ham radio. So we'll be going down the road, and all of a sudden it's conditioned CHS. We can't hear anything. And it always happens, it seems, either on a slow country road where there's a lot of traffic, or you get to a little town and you have a traffic light. And those traffic lights, by the way, they stay red for about a, an At hour. Least an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you might as well take your headphones off because you can't hear anybody. Just, <laughs> just really, really bad. So we, we try to get through that. Again, if you're sitting at home on your desk, you don't have that problem. So it's another unique feature that you have when you're operating mobile because the environment's changing and people are expecting you to come back very quickly and all of a sudden they're like, why, why aren't they coming back to us? And it's because we can't hear them. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, it really is. Now, Mike doesn't agree with me on this, but Max does. I think you have to have very good headphones. Light ones. Light for 20 hours? Well, we use radio comfortable. Yeah, to your point, comfortable. Yeah. Well, I, I think the radio sport headphones are very comfortable. They're like uh, David Clark's for the, for people that fly, and and it's so padding in, that, that I can't hear what's going on in the car. So if I'm back there playing radio and we go into a new county and the driver says, "Hey, we're in a new county," I don't hear it. He has to drive, reach back and tap me on the knee. What? 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 You know, and then, and I realize, oh, we're in a new county, and do my thing, and then start all over again. So. Mike, he likes to wear the thin headphones. Or earbuds. Or earbuds. <laughs> but you can hear stuff out, outside. You can hear horns and, and other stuff. And, and I don't want to hear that. So I like to have good headphones. So that, that's my point. Um, and also I was going to say, that Mike also alluded to, that you want to go ahead and, and uh, spend the night at a faraway point. So you go one route, and then you come back a different route the next day. So you maximize your county list. Um, it's fun having a new pileup in every county. Again, if you're at home, you can get a pileup going and it's a lot of fun, but that's all you have to offer. If you go to county to county to county to county, wow, it's just over and over and over again. Yes, Steve? You check into your hotel uh, fairly early in the evening and then just keep right on running? 
No, we don't get there till midnight. Okay. It's down in Brunswick. Yeah. And we, we spend the night and then we're on the road, what, eight hours later, nine hours later, something like that. Yeah. And when you move to the next county, they're waiting on you. <coughs> so sometimes you have to sell a spot, but yeah. most of the time, they're waiting. To, they see your route. They know where you're headed. They're waiting. If they pounce on you the moment you, you sell a spot. Okay. And, and you can run APRS also and mm -hmm. announce that you're, you know, what your APRS number is. Right. They, they'll track you. So if you want to operate as a rover, that's great. And I highly encourage you to do that. But if you have a dedicated driver at all times, it doesn't have to be the same person at all times. We can, you can rotate. That keeps the car in motion and your Q rate goes way, way up. And, and, all, and your fun be, rate goes way up too. The driver can be a hand. Sure. And you can still be in the single category if the driver doesn't make any contact. Or, or operate six meters. Right. Which is zilch. Yeah. <laughs> but then we're using an antenna that's what three feet long or something like that. Not very good. But well, we're driving all over the, the band is always dead. Yeah. So we also had a, a gentleman with us last year named Mark, and I forgot to write his last name down. What is his last name? KK4. Is it V? I can't remember. It starts with a. Doesn't... He's not here tonight. His father's very sick. I don't know where that is, huh? Mark Weber. Weber. Mark was our driver last year because Max couldn't join us. So it was just Mike and I, and he was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful was partner. Fly fishing. I was fly fishing. <laughs> we well, won't hold that. Fly so Mark made a, made a couple of points, and I'm just going to share those with you all as well. He said, have a backup plan. For example, don't rely on your phone to give you GPS information. Now, why would that be? No cell coverage. I didn't hear anybody. Why, why would that be? No cell coverage. Where does your cell phone get its map data from? Cell towers. From the cell towers. So if you're in an area where you don't have any cell service, it doesn't work. So we use the old-fashioned Garmin GPSs. Well, I guess they're Garmin. I don't know. They are. But the old-fashioned kind that don't have to rely on the 4G service to get the maps. Or, he said, Mark said, think about using paper maps. We, we take paper maps also. So that's a good backup. He also said be rested. That's certainly true. Have the vehicle serviced. Clean the windows on the inside and the outside. Do both of them. And I was a big stickler for that. Um, have small tools. Have a flashlight. Snacks and water. They're all essential. That's true. I like what we call it. Max didn't say it, but you remember how he's talking about that big container of, of uh, animal crackers. I also want to say Girl Scout cookies, but that's not true. We call them QSO fuel. So if the Q rate starts to go down, eat a couple of the cra crackers and hopefully the Q rate will go back up. And he also says it's more fun when you have two or more people, which is true. If you can go out by yourself, that's fine, but you can't operate really while you're driving because you've got to log your, your cues and all that. That's just going to be too much for one person. Two or three people, maybe four, is the way to go. That's about all I've got. It's a lot of fun, and, and uh, it's 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 tiring, it's challenging, and when we get home on Sunday night late, 11 o'clock at night or whatever it is, we're wiped out tired, but we've had a ball. And we look, we, we've always said, well, I've done the last two years, I've said at the end of the night on Sunday, do y'all want to do this again next year? Because if it was really bad, that's the worst time to ask somebody, do you want to do this again? And we've always said yes. We've always said yes. It's the most fun in ham radio I've had in the 50 years I've been like. Okay. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. Yes, Steve? Uh, when you get done and you log all, uh, upload that to LOTW? I guess we do. We have not ever oh. done it to LOTW because we make a lot of the same contacts in different counties. And I've never done it to LOTW. I'd be happy to do that if we can figure out how to do it easily without having to have right. a probably need an a entry for every county. Mike. Do you have the sense that the driver's doing that on purpose? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Well, Tim's driving. I do. No, I've been one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, uh, well, you probably make two or three hundred contacts then, don't you? I couldn't hear you. You probably make at least two or three hundred contacts during How many weekend. contacts do we have? Let's just going to ask Mike that. How many do we want to work? 2,000 plus a year. We make 2,000 plus yeah. a year. And if we, we, make get, four, we make 400 contacts on 80. Yeah. It, so we're, we're on three band. We're either on 20 and 40 or we're on 40 and 80. In the day, 20, 40. At night, we're on 40 and 80. 
And uh, sometimes we get in these big counties, and when we get through about halfway, our key rate starts to drop because we've worked everybody that wants that county. So we're telling the driver, hurry up, you know, get it, we need a new county. <laughs> as soon as we get it, we're ready to go, and then here comes the pile up again. 199,013 points. Yeah. I, 100, what? 199,013 last year. Oh. Okay. And you're you're the only big rovers in the state right now. No, in the no, we're not. There's a, a there, guy from Columbus. Yeah, John, BAI. Yep. They didn't go out last year. That's why we had to readjust our route. Okay. But they're all from Georgia, right? All the Georgia. No, no, or, no, 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 no. No, uh, there there have been oh, rovers from Tennessee come in. Rover groups from Tennessee. <laughs> and they're very good. And they're very very good from the Tennessee contest group. <laughs> Yeah. We've had uh, folks from Texas, the guy that actually does the, the map, he comes in from Midland, he's real good at it. Rover I CW single Bears. operator winner was from oh. Iowa. Wow. In zero right. G. John had a question. Yeah. John, Clint. It was just a comment. Um, Wes and I learned about three years ago the hard way. Think twice before you go north. Yeah, the counties, the counties are, counties are north. huge. And unless you're able to operate in the back seat of a, of a vehicle charging down a twisty mountain road, <laughs> it won't be much fun. Yeah, we've actually stopped in a county. It was real short, like a mile long. So we stopped and just let the driver get out and walk around a little bit. We're just bagging away back there. Any other questions? We're done.